Hey guys, this is For Sake of Reality here with the 16th episode of the Brendan Tutorial Series. In this episode, we're going to be setting up bullet hit prediction, which is basically when you're at a corner or something like that similar, and your bullet won't make it from your muzzle to your crosshair, then it creates a secondary crosshair where your bullet's actually going to hit. The best way I can showcase that is by actually loading up remnant quickly and actually showing you that so I just have it quickly loaded up here and in a position so basically, basically you aim you have your normal but when you get to a corner and say your bullet will make it to this crosshair you'll see it you almost have a red dot where your rocks and the crosshair where your bullet's actually going to that's what we're going to be creating today. Might be a couple videos for this one because it's a little bit of a harder one. I'm going to exit out of this and get into the tutorial. Alright. So, the first thing we're going to want to do here is go to our blueprints, items, and our weapons. And we're going to want to open up our master weapon. We're going to have everything handled through here. Um, we're going to want to create a new function. And this will be git shoot location. This will basically be the trace from your camera to, to determine like if you're so there'll be a trace in your muzzle to your camera and your camera directly and it basically if those two points can't reach each other then it will create the offset uh, aimer or uh, crosshair so in here we're going to want to trace from our player's camera, so we want to get our character reference. Search for camera. Let's get our player camera like that. Get world location. And we'll also want the forward vector. Okay. So we know, so now we have the location and the forward looking direction. And we are going to line trace by channel. And we're actually going to make a couple of changes to our collision and our trace. So we need a new trace channel. So we want to go to our project settings, editing windows, project settings, go to our collision. And we're going to create a new trace channel called projectile trace. Accept that as block. And we're going to create a new preset. Call that projectile collision. Projectile object type, which is our projectile right here. And we're just going to ignore this. We don't want to hit the trace of our camera or any other traces. We don't want to hit the visibility or the camera stone uh, channel. So now you want, if you come back into your weapon, you compile and save, you'll see the project trace. And I believe I might have said this earlier, but if you go to your compile and save on compile on success only, so basically if there's no errors, it will save it. It'll save it as well. That's why I don't often do both. So now that we have that projectile channel made, we can set this for duration so we can actually see our trace. And 
from here we're going to check if it hits anything at all in general so you can hold B and click to get a branch so this will check if it hit if the trace hits anything we're also going to want to get our hit results so right click and break that now we'll give us all of this information for what we're hitting and if we hit something We are going to first set our muzzle socket location. Actually, just now thinking about this, we'll probably want to set our muzzle socket location no matter what. So I'm just going to name this variable. Muzzle socket location. Type in socket muzzle. And I'm actually going to move this before our line trace happens. So that it always gets our muzzle socket location. And then we'll set the muzzle socket of our weapon mesh. And I actually missed a couple of things in this line trace. I got a little ahead of myself, I guess. We're actually going to need to make some room here. Because this is where our hit location is from. But our forward vector, we're going to want to multiply it by a float. So this will determine the length of our line. So put a 10,000 for now. Twenty-five thousand. 10,000 will be fine. And we we'll want a vector plus a vector. Plug this one into the bottom, like that. And we're getting our location, the original location plus our forward vector to get our font to get our end location. So basically, it's our our uh, location. Our forward vector multiplies it by 10,000 to sort of stretch out the line by that amount and then adds up together to get the end location. Now over here, we're going to want to get our muzzle socket location and find look at rotation. And from here, we're going to use the impact point, which is where the bullet or where the camera trace impacts an object. That's our target, and our start point is our muzzle. So from our muzzle to our impact point of our camera. Oh. Not that one we're gonna make transform we want this one right here that'll give us our rotation and our location it's gonna be our muzzle socket and we're gonna promote this to a variable that's our shot location We've hit something that's when we want to set our shot location. 
So basically, if our camera trace hits something, then it will set our shot location of our, from our muzzle shot to our impact point of our camera. from camera so that makes sense it's a little bit confusing but we'll get through it and from here we can cop actually copy this right here paste it down here so from our false, we're going to want to also set our loop shoot location. So if our camera trace doesn't hit anything. And that's going to be from the final point of our camera trace. So once it reaches 10,000 and it's not hitting anything, that'll be our target. Let's drag that over like this. From muzzle socket to final camera location. Final point camera. So we need to be able to determine that as well. Move this down a little bit so it's sticking like that. And move this box like so. And from here we can actually just return. And we're going to return the shoot location. The reason I did that was because it wouldn't have changed the letter unless I changed the word altogether. And we're going to want another for a turn up here. Getting the set, setting the location if we do hit something. Now I'm going to test out the line trace. And to do that, we're actually going to want to print the name of our hit actor so that we actually know what we hit. Get name. You want to get the display name. Could just get print string and drag that over into it and it would automatically create this, but that's how you would do this without doing that. Because that's what you want. You want to get the display name, whatever it's hitting. And... We're actually going to need to send this on client on each client individually so we want to create a custom event and call this client shoot location and then we'll just drag our function in and plug this in run an owning client and set this reliable File and save. Let's name this, and that this is only the first part. By the way, we still we still need to figure out the mu determine the muzzle from the trace itself. It's just tracing from the camera. So now we have this. We can simply just plug this in after our fire rate. 
line shoot location. Not shooting from the camera itself. And we are able to get characters, that means traces. Hitting it's giving us the names of everything that the camera's traces hitting. I'm just gonna go back to my character, because that shouldn't actually do that. Actually, it might actually be hitting our capsule. Yeah, it is. So, uh, we want to put our capsule on ignore, so we got, so bullets can go between our character's legs and stuff. Because it, cause it, if not, it will be hitting our capsule, and now our, it will hit our character. And it won't hit our capsule. I'm hitting the floor and it's going through his legs. Hit the player. I'll hit him. That's all we're going to do in the look at in the character. It's going to organize this a little bit. Uh, that's going to be everything for this episode. If you found this video helpful and want to see more, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new real video uploads. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below or join my Discord server using the link in the description below. Thank you, and I will see you all in the next episode.